Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. And despite it still being a quiet January window for Celtic, we're all craving something. There's a couple of wee things we can talk about. Not much, nothing to get your hopes up about, but something to kind of tide us by for a wee bit. We're scraping the boat with the barrel, really, so let's do this. Hello, if you haven't already, make sure to hit like and subscribe, it'd be much appreciated, we're trying to get to 50,000 subscribers this year, we are literally about to break the 42,000 mark, so if you haven't already, please support the channel, help us reach that goal by pressing those buttons down below, it's absolutely free, it'd be much appreciated, especially at times like this when there's not an awful lot to talk about, aye, January 10th. And we are still waiting on something significant to happen for Celtic in this January transfer window. It seems that Peter Lawwell, Dermot Desmond, the rest of them, uh, have all fallen asleep. Brendan Rodgers uh, urged for quality players continuously throughout his press conferences coming up to this window. We, we have nothing. And I know I came on this channel the other, the other day and said, listen, don't worry, keep the heed, things will be fine. But it's getting to that point where you're just a little bit bored and it's getting tedious that we're not even getting linked with players. And the players we are getting linked with end up getting linked away from Celtic. So it's been a very weird window. I know that there's still the majority of it to go. We're still not even halfway through January. But we need some movement soon. We need some encouraging signs that something's going to happen in this window for the club. I've always been an advocate for saying that there's no point in signing players for the sake of it. But the lack of players we're getting linked with is getting a little bit tedious and frustrating. So hopefully that changes soon. However, we've got a couple of stories to talk about today. Why don't we start with one of the players who we've spoke about numerous times, not only in this transfer window, but in the summer transfer window. And apparently how his move to Celtic, or potential move to Celtic, won't be happening this window. Let's talk about Matthias Kvisgarden then, a name that we've spoke about numerous times in recent weeks uh, after he was linked with Celtic in the summer window and this window. He was someone who at the start of the January transfer window uh, you know, looked like a realistic signing for Celtic. We were hearing reports and rumours that a move could be completed um, uh, this, this month for him to become a Celtic player. That has changed drastically. Bronby have closed the door uh, apparently on Matthias Kreese Garden leaving the club this window. So Celtic won't be signing him by the looks of it. This was the article published by Bold, a Danish news publication who, of course, um, cover the likes of Brunby and Matthias Kreese Garden and the likes. Um, I think they know best. This was the headline, Brunby closes the window, the best stay here. Football director Karsten Jensen will under no circumstances sell Brunby's key players in the January window. The article goes on to give some quotes from the sporting director at Brownby saying this, We are in a strong financial position where we must take advantage of the sporting success we achieved in the autumn. We have made the decision that we have entered a transfer window where we do not sell our best players. In other words, we are not going to sell out the opportunities we have created in the autumn in order to go all the way this season in the Super League. And then obviously that, you know, considers the fact that Matthias Kreisgarden is, is one of the club's best players. They have no intention whatsoever of selling him. This is another passage from the article by Bold saying, The signal is thus clear and distinct. Neither Matthias Kreisgarden nor Nikolai Vallis or any other Bromby profiles will get a pass in the window. It looks as though they are staying. Bromby have high expectations of themselves in this window and even though he's been linked, Matthias Kreisgarten of course, has been linked with numerous sides including Celtic, including Schalke and a number of European outfits, they have absolutely no intention of letting him go for what seems like any price. Uh, they consider themselves in a strong financial position where they can hold on to these assets to try and guarantee them more success. They're probably aiming for, for success and getting to European football and, and maybe even further. Um, they don't want to sell their best players. They're being very stubborn, stubborn on it. And there's been no uh, sort of uh, retaliation from the players, it seems, either. There's been nothing to suggest that any of the players mentioned here, Matthias Kvistgarden or the other Ian, who <laughs> has no uh, sort of significance to Celtic, they've not came out, they've not said they're unhappy with it, they want to leave the club, anything like that, it seems like they're pretty happy. So, the door is shut, Matthias Kvistgarden won't be joining Celtic in this window, 
and that's that. I mean, how many times do I need to keep banging this drum? It's the, the window where nobody wants to sell their best assets. Now, I know that the Danish league is set up a, a little bit differently, isn't it? Um, in terms of the, when the football is played and such. But, you know, they still don't want to sell their best players in this window. They know how desperate other clubs are as well, where you can obviously take advantage of situations and ask for a bit more money. It seems like they're not even going to go down that route. Said that, you know, clubs, well, gonna be, it's got to be a difficult window for Celtics. It's not going to be the quick and easy fix that people thought it might have been. And, and that's us obviously seen that, that Kavis Garden isn't, isn't going to be coming here. We've obviously seen all the links with McKenna go down. We've seen links with other players go down. Um... Yeah, it's it's not something I'm particularly surprised that um, if he's that good a player and Bromby value him that highly, they're going to want him through this window and it's as simple as that. So Celtic need to turn their attention elsewhere. Um, and, you know, Kavis Garden obviously being a forward means that we need to start looking at other forwards. However, there's been a very big lack of forwards that we've been linked with um, in substitute for Matthias Kavis Garden. So that's something we're going to have to watch um, develop over the next few days if there's any names that get you know, pull out the bag. We have been linked with a winger, which we're going to come on to in a minute, but somebody has to come in. We don't have, oh, Kyogo's the only striker at the club, um, and, and, and that can't be the situation, I'm afraid. Now, a moment ago, we mentioned a winger, and Celtic have been linked with a winger in the past couple of days, one that's been bubbling away quietly that I've not really spoke about in the channel because I wanted to see uh, more of it before I spoke about it. You know, I thought it might have been quite pointless. However, they are, there are talks of Nicolas Kuhn currently playing for Rapid Vienna in Austria um, being looked at by Celtic, the winger, the right winger who is uh, German, uh, currently playing in Austria, a product of the RB Leipzig youth system, uh, could be a Celtic target and could realistically be coming to Celtic now after a very weird turn of events. Uh, which made him look as though he'd be staying at Rapid Vienna, but now Rapid Vienna open to selling the player. Very strange one, but let's have a look at the comments. So this was in the article published by Football Scotland yesterday. This was yesterday morning. The headline was Nicholas Kuhn Celtic transfer may be greenlit as Rapid Vienna could be tempted into selling. Now, the original comments from the executives at Rapid Vienna were originally this. I assume that everyone will be with us in the second half of the season. I haven't heard anything to the contrary, saying that they, they weren't assuming they would uh, lose any players, they thought everybody would be staying, they weren't open to selling, but then very quickly afterwards, I think it was less than 24 hours later, this was the comments from the same executives to Sky Sports. He said, every player has his price. If the offer is right, of course you have to deal with it. So, from a day prior being in a position where, nope, we're not selling, uh, and that applied to Nicholas Kuhn, uh, to then 24 hours later telling Sky Sports that every player has their price, it looks as though Rapid Vienna are quite up for selling the winger, and have probably realised the links with Celtic in the past few days. Now, what is that price, you'll be asking, you know, if every player has their price. The reports initially suggested that Celtic were interested in signing the winger for a fee of £2.5 million pounds, uh, after he signed for Rapid Vienna for £500,000. Um, so it's obviously profit for them. I mean, they're making five times their money. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge profit for a club like Rapid Vienna, two and a half million pounds isn't a cheap amount of money either for Celtic, it's obviously not in that range of, of, of upper echelon signings but it certainly is a, a bit of money to spend on a right winger um, and somebody who's been playing quite well for Rapid Vienna to be, be fair. I'll do a deep dive on the player if more comes out about a realistic chance of, of signing Nicholas Kuhn. Um, however, in his year and a half, this is some stats here, in his year and a half with uh, the Austrian side, he's done not too bad. He has seven goals and ten assists in that year and a half. He's been there previously playing for Ajax and Bayern Munich as well. He didn't make it to the senior sides at either. He was always in the, the, um, the second tier of the Bayern sides, the Bayern Munich Zwei team and the Ajax secondary team as well, who actually won, I think I think they won the uh, the Dutch second tier with that Ajax side, um, if, if, if I'm correct on my understanding my reading. Um, he's also played uh, in the third tier of German football, I'm trying to look at all my notes here, third tier of German football, the Trialiga, where he won that league as well with the Bayern Munich Zwei side. Um, yeah, he's been doing okay through his young age, his career. He's now made it into senior football with Rapid Vienna, where he's had a decent enough year, year and a half. Um, 
is it the answer that Celtic need on that right wing? Is it an option to come in behind Lee and, and and if he's good enough, maybe overtake Lee Elabada in the pecking order? Who knows? We're going to have to wait and see. Am I convinced that Celtic are absolutely in there for him yet? I don't know. It's only a couple of small reports. You know me. I love a German. Um, so I will happily watch him come in if possible, um, but we're just going to have to, to wait and see. I think that the right wing is a position that a lot of people have cried out for a little bit more depth in. Um, obviously, Yang hasn't quite been the standard that a lot of people would like. Um, Abada has had his fitness issues this season, so maybe bringing in someone like a Nicholas Kuhn could be a good idea. I don't think there's too many right wingers out there that we've looked at realistically. We could be saying, oh, they're going to join the club. So, yeah, just keep an eye over the next couple of days. As I said, if more develops from it and it becomes more of a serious topic and a, a serious conversation, we'll do a bit more of a deep dive in the player. But that one is kind of bubbling away in the background. And a couple of minor stories to finish up. One in regards to Rocco Vaha, who we discussed last night on our live stream. He looks as though he's edging ever closer to leaving the club. Anthony Joseph reported this update this morning that Celtic have granted Bologna permission to speak to Rocco Vata, um, who obviously want to pick him up on a pre-contract agreement at the end of the season. However, they're exploring looking to bring him in now. Um, in the January window on a permanent basis. So Celtic might pick up a very small sum of money, but it looks as though Rocco Vata's Celtic career is is pretty much done. It looks as though he is moving on. And finally, Celtic could be in for a little bit of a cash windfall in this January window should Jeremy Frimpong get his move to Arsenal. It looks as though Arsenal are ready to trigger his €34 million release clause. I think it's €40 million Euros, um, from Bayer Leverkusen and uh, bring him to the Premier League, which Celtic will make about €6 million Euros from if reports are to be believed. Of course, we were entitled to 30% of the profit made by Bayer Leverkusen, and uh, they spent £11.5 million on him. I think it was the final price that they signed him from, uh, for from us, selling him for €40 million. Euros. Profit looks to be around €6 million. Euros. Celtic could be landing that should he complete his move to Arsenal in this window. Um, he's been fantastic for Leverkusen, of course, one of the best fullbacks in Europe from an attacking standpoint. I, I genuinely don't think there's a better fullback in Europe at the minute uh, than Jeremy Frimpong, and that's reflected in how well Bayer Leverkusen are playing as well, top of the, the Bundesliga, of course, flying with Xabi Alonso, and, and Jeremy Frimpong has been a massive part of that, so, you know, obviously, look, catching interest from Premier League sides and bigger sides, um, and that could happen, Arsenal fans seem to believe that that's going to happen in this window, just going to have to wait and see, however, I mean, will we spend that money anytime soon? I don't know. So that's that for today's video then, that's your kind of brief transfer update that there is. Um, no Matthias Kvysgarden, potentially Nicholas Kuhn, um, Jeremy Frimpong's off to Arsenal and Rocco Vat is away. There you go, everything else that we've spoken about or any other transfers that have been happening, ingoings or outgoings, there has been live streams, there has been previous videos, make sure to check them out and you can keep up to date. But for me today, that's all. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed, let me know your opinions in the comments below and I'll see you all next time.